Why, aren't you a delicate thing? Doma spoke. He simply frowned and turned around to continue tying the kimono. Once you were done, you looked at him. Leave, you're annoying me, you spoke. Hmm, very well, he responded with a smirk. He was so quick he almost appeared to have teleported. Akaza then knocked on the door. Inside, it opened. Finished, he asked, which you nodded. Dismissed, a deep voice said with an instant, with an intensely ma- made Akaza bow slightly and leave instantly. It was Muzan. You backed away only for your wrists to be grabbed. You're going to listen to me now and do exactly what I say. I do not. Do I make myself clear this time? Muzan asked, and you nodded. Are you sure? You look at how many times you've disobeyed me, darling. What makes you think I can trust you? Muzan asked. Passively, you looked at him almost through, almost through you. Your eyes lifted and stared at him. You then lowered yourself. His eyes followed you. Watching as you were now bowed in front of him, your hands at your sides pressing firmly onto the ground. That's all I've been expecting of you, Muzan spoke. Content with your submissive to him, he kneeled and wrapped your hair into a low bow, pin, pinning it with a golden pin containing a red gem in the center. He tied your hair up with two fingers. Just submit, your, just submit yourself to me, and life will be so much easier for you, he sa- Muzan s- said, making you look at him with both eyes. Get up and follow me, Muzan spoke, helping you up and making you follow him until the sound of a bee while was heard, and t- you two were suddenly on a platform alongside Doma. You studied Doma, noticing his hands contained a vowel. Yin can... Extend your ar- other arm, Muzan said, and you complied, rolling up the kimono sleeves and showcasing your visible veins. Muzan created oh my god, inscription. Once again, you hadn't flinched, now being used to the slicing expression, as the blood began to form perfectly large in our round beams, Muzan took the vial from Doma. The vial was held as Doma twisted his arms to allow the blood to flow into the container. You watched as the deep red started filling the vial quickly. Then you... What? Anki punk shoot. Finally, your bleeding came, came to an end and the vial was filled to the brim then handed back to Doma. Doma, when the sun rises tomorrow, you shall consume this and create absolute chaos. Muzan started, the air turning dark and suffocating. Doma smiled and bowed his head, taking the vial from Muzan. Muzan then left in an in- oh, Doma then left in an instant. You and I will be going into the city again today, and I do not feel like repeating myself again. So behave, Muzan said, now facing you. Once the two of you left the fortress, you started walking into the forest, and finally... The tall building of the city could be seen standing tall. Accompanied by the raising sun, you stretched out your arm and allowed Muzan to reopen the previous inscription and and started collecting the blood. After a few punctures, he had enough, enough and held pressure onto your arm to stop the bleeding. When the bleeding stopped, the sun was already rising, and Muzan extended an arm waiting for you to hook your arm around his. Then you started to walk. Many friends had greeted you and showcased their children to you. You tried keeping it short to avoid an angry Muzan. After a while, your cousin had spotted you. Hey, Yin, it's been so long. How are you? She asked when a man holding a child walked after her. Uh, it's, uh, it's been going well with me. And who is this? You asked, referring to the man. He's my husband, and how about you? She said, talking about Muzan. He's my husband as well, you said with a light, light-hearted light smile. Ah, uh, and here, I thought you were never going to find this special person, but I'm glad you did. Your cousin chirped. Your attention turned to the little girl in the man's arms. 
And who is this? Hmm? You hummed, tapping the little girl in the nose. She's our baby girl, and isn't, isn't, is she not just stunning? Here, hold her. Your cousin and course, making you quickly but carefully take the little girl in your arms, not wanting her to get too close to moose on. As you held her, she instantly fell asleep to your gentle swing and rocking. Muzon had a genuine smile on his face, enjoying seeing you such a nurturing and mother side of you. She seems to love you. I wish she could fall asleep that quickly at night, though, your cousin said. I'm sure one day you two will have your... Oh, sure. I'm sure one day you'll two have your own be precious little girl, and I'm sure she'll be absolutely beautiful. Your cousin spoke, practically going fran frantic at the idea. You cringed as a thought, looking up at Muzan to see him already looking at you, making you look back down in awkwardness. Um, yeah, I'm sure one day, you said, taking to dismiss the awkward topic. You then may made up some excuse to leave, and granted your friend, greeted your friend, and Muzan took you. This made, hello, this made way along the streets of Shudoku with your arms linked together. Muzan had left to go and speak with someone he was previously business partners with, and simply told you not to step foot outside the sh of Shudoku. After walking around for a while, you noticed a small drop of red from on the pathway. You noticed it dripped into a small trail. You almost gave yourself away after following it as you ran into Doma. But hid behind a wall, he was holding a woman by the neck. You almost threw up at the sight of the woman struggling against him, only for her head to be ripped off. Doma held her head above, high above and let her blood drip down into his throat. Two policemen then walked and have while having a chat. They both looked traumatized at the view in front of them. Hey, hey, what do you think you're doing? One of them yelled. The other added, yeah, that's cannibalism. He yelled. Doma stood, looking unimpressed at this inter in interiation, clearly towering over the two men. Oh, are these what humans call policemen? Provoking pitiful, oh, provoking p pitiful protection, yet denying the existence of our bigger threat. As demons? Doma asked, leaving the two men quivering, slowly backing away. Uh, what are, what are you? There's no way demons exist. Or standing in broad daylight, one of them screamed. Doma laughed. <laughs> Aren't the two of you so funny? Doma st stared, started in pure joy. He dropped the woman's corpse and created a gruesome sound as the flesh collapsed onto one another, her head rolling away from the body. Doma then stepped forward and grabbed the two policemen by the necks and holding them high in the air. They were kicking and fighting the air. You know, I prefer women, as there's so much more nutritious for us demons. But I guess you can't go to waste, Doma exclaimed, tightening his grip as the two men until the pressure was unbearable and both of their heads flew off. But the most horrific har part of it was the, uh, the croaked reaction never left their faces, even after death. Doma simply dropped their bodies and scanning untrellishly in the two murders he just committed.